Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's Nelly here. So today, we're going to talk about what it's like playing in a major league game. What are some of the big differences between playing in a minor league game or maybe just any other baseball game and then a major league game? I get this question a lot from people. Um, so there's a lot of details we're going, to get, we're going to get into. The first thing is that there's really no comparison between a major league game and any other baseball game that you've ever played in. There's just nothing, there's nothing like it. There's so many things that are different about it. Um, and nothing can, nothing can really prepare you totally for what it's going to feel like uh, when you finally play in that major league game. Now, one of the reasons, before we get into the the details of this, one of the reasons is you got to remember for most people, playing in a major league game is a goal that most players have had for a really, really long time. I'd say it was probably around my sophomore year of high school, right around there where I, where I kind of said, you know what, baseball is going to be what I want to do with my life. I want to try to go on and play college baseball. I want to try to go on and play professional baseball, and I want to play in the major leagues. <clears throat> That's when I think it became a goal that I was like, you know, I don't know if I knew I could play in the major leagues or play professionally, but I knew that I really loved baseball, and I knew I was pretty good at it, and I knew I wanted to pursue it. And you can even go back further than that. You can go back for a lot of kids all the way back to when they just start playing baseball. You know, I probably started playing t-ball when I was five or so, five or six. Um, but if you think way back, I mean, my goal when I was real, real little, I wanted to play in the major leagues, <clears throat> excuse me, or I wanted to play in the NHL. Those were like the things that I wanted to do. So you can imagine when you finally get to the major leagues after uh, wanting to get there, dreaming about getting there, and then working really, really hard. You know, like I said, from soft, basically sophomore year of high school, I dedicated myself pretty much every day to trying to get there. Now, I did play other sports a little bit, but especially once you get into college. When I got into college, it was every pretty much every single day of my life was dedicated towards trying to get better at baseball. So you can imagine that's a lot of days. Um, okay, so just to keep that in mind first. Now, Let's get into the details. So the, the first thing, I think the first thing you kind of notice when you get to a major league game, when you play in your first major league game, is the atmosphere. First, it's the crowd. So no matter what level you play at, you're never going to play in, in, a, in a before a crowd like this. So my first game was at um, Dodger Stadium, and it holds, I don't know, right around 50,000, I think. Holds a lot of people. And so I've played before that in front of, you know, 10,000, maybe, yeah, probably, I, I would say, I guess maybe 10,000 is probably the most I played at in front uh, before that. And 10,000 feels like a lot of people. Um, and I can remember certain games, like you kind of make this progression as you're getting older, where you're playing in Little League and you play in front of your parents and then... You know, maybe you go and you play in a big tournament as you're moving up into high school and you play in front of a couple more people. But again, it's mostly parents. And then you get into high school. I remember our one of our playoff games my senior year. I think there was a couple thousand people there. People still talk, still talk about that game. Um, we ended up playing against PBD High School and they had a player, Jeff Allison, who had just been drafted in the first round. And I had just been drafted out of high school by the Dodgers. And so a lot of people came. It was a really big game. And I remember people were like, oh, man, it was the most amazing atmosphere of all time. And, it, and when you're playing in it, you, you're like, wow, this is a lot, you know, a lot of people, a couple thousand people. Um, then you go to college. I remember my first game as a freshman playing at Clemson. And, you know, there was a couple more thousand people there. And I remember being like, wow, this, that was like the really the first time I felt like an opposing team's crowd kind of influencing the game. Because you're still a young player in college and they're screaming stuff at you to make you want to cry and go home. And, uh, you know, I, I remember that game. But when you get to the major leagues and there's 50,000 people there, um, it is definitely different. Not only different from just hearing that noise. I remember when Manny Ramirez hit a home run against us. 
it was so loud. I remember my head started like pulsating at second base. And I remember being like, I'm getting a headache from this. They were pumping the music so loud and people are screaming. Um, and that's something you never, ever have experienced as a player. The other thing is just the being in a major league stadium, um, the viewpoint from you as a player is different. When I played second base there, at Dodger Stadium, it goes, the upper deck is so high. And when you're looking at the hitter, it is, it's crazy to just see people going all the way up in your view. Where literally, like, you don't even see the sky. You just see people. Um, and that makes you feel, I mean, you, you were aware of that. I was pretty aware of that, especially on defense. Not so much on offense, but on defense. I was definitely aware. It felt much different to have so many people in the, in the background. Um... It just takes a little bit uh, of getting used to, getting adjusted to, seeing that background when you're used to at most levels, especially when you're younger, you're used to a backstop and maybe a couple of people, or sometimes you're used to nobody sitting back there. Um, so that was definitely different. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, just everything getting scrutinized, um, you know, being, oh, we'll get to that in a second, but just everything being scrutinized as, as a major league player that you're not used to. And let's actually just start talking about it. I put, I put a couple notes down here. So, um, you know, being on TV. In the minor leagues, you might play a couple games on TV, but in the major leagues, you're playing every day on TV. Um, you're going on, you know, if you do something well, you're getting on TV. Back then, it was like ESPN was the main thing. Now I know that there's a lot more. It must be, and today's game must be so much harder with regard to this because now there's social media and everything you do is going to be everywhere. Back when I was playing, social media was just kind of starting. Um, and, you know, if you did something well or did something really bad, it went on ESPN. I've told this story before. I made a horrible throw in Milwaukee against the Brewers. And uh, I went home later that night and put on ESPN and all of a sudden the game popped up and then my play popped up and I had to shut the TV off quick because I didn't want to see myself throw it 40 rows deep. Um, if you haven't seen that, I, put, I actually put that video up on YouTube. If you type in like my horrible throw against the Milwaukee Brewers, I think it'll come up. Um, but I remember seeing that and being like, this is horrible. I can't watch my favorite show now because uh, I have to watch myself make errors. And you know, people call you, you get calls from friends and um, you know, family or like, oh man, what the hell were you doing on that play? Or, hey, I, I saw you made this horrible play. Now, if you're a really good player, yeah, that'd be cool. But I, I didn't have a whole lot of things happen to me where people called me. I mean, my home run, I had people call me. Obviously, that was that was cool. But more people were like, what the hell are you doing, dude? <laughs> so it's a lot. It's just a lot different. You get scrutinized for a lot more, obviously. Everything you do is really out there for everybody to see. Okay. Um, the players that you play against is obviously hugely different. You're playing against people that you watch as a kid, a lot of people as a kid. Like my first game, I played against Manny Ramirez, I played against Greg Maddox, I played against Nomar Garcia Power. I played against a lot more that I watched on TV also. But those main guys, like Manny Ramirez and Nomar Garcia Power were my childhood like idols for the Red Sox. Manny Ramirez is my favorite player of all time. And so it's definitely different when you go and all of a sudden you're playing against your favorite players of all time. No matter how much you say, you know, like they used to always tell us <clears throat> as we're moving up in levels, they always say, you know, you, you don't compete against the name on the back of the jersey when you're playing against guys. You can't get consumed with the name on the back of the jersey. They always, always say that. And, and that is a good point, although I don't need to see Manny's jersey na name on the back of his jersey to know that that's Manny. Um, but I get what they're saying. And you really can't, especially when you're a hitter facing a pitcher. So like when I face Greg Maddox, if I'm going up there being like, oh man, here's a Hall of Famer. Oh God, this guy struck out so many guys. Oh, like it's going to be really difficult to hit against that guy. At pretty much every other point in your career, usually, you, mean, you might know who the opposing team is, but I've seen Greg Maddox strike out thousands of guys, right, on TV. And I've seen Manny Ramirez hit 500 plus home runs on TV. And so it's different when you are used to seeing somebody be successful and you see them dominate. And now all of a sudden you have to go out and compete against them. That is definitely a different dynamic that most players don't, you don't deal with that at really any other level. Um, so that's definitely different. Uh, another thing is <clears throat> the talent level is on a different level from what you're used to. 
And a lot of people will say, well, a lot of players have the talent to play in the big leagues, right? You'll hear that a lot in the minor league, especially like you've got the talent to play in the big leagues. You've got the talent to play and, you, and all this stuff. Um, but I felt like I felt like my way through the minor leagues, I felt like I felt like the first time I noticed the talent level was was different. For me, it was really AAA. A lot of people say AA is where it's different. Now, AA, I faced, I wasn't in AA a whole lot. That might be why. I was only there for a couple of months. Um, but you do face really talented guys there. But I thought AAA is the first place where you go to and you're like, these guys are talented, but more than that, they know how to play. Like, they're very, they're, they're talented, but they're very skilled. Like, the pitchers, maybe they don't all throw 98, um, but they can all really, really pitch and they can really spin breaking balls and they can command off speed pitches and they can throw any off speed pitch or any pitch in any count. And they're, they're smart and they know how to set you up. And, um, you know, in, on defense, the field is a triple A. They just didn't make many errors. Like every other level I played at, you'd see like silly errors sometimes. When I got the triple A, it was the first time where I was like, man, they don't, you know, if you hit the ball on the ground, they're usually going to field it more times than not. And when you get to the big leagues, that gets amplified even more. You know, like when you hit a ball on the ground in the big leagues, it's an out pretty much most of the time. You got to really smoke it to get it through the infield. And when you're a hitter, there are no nights off. Like you're always facing somebody that is both extremely talented and extremely skilled. These guys have proven that they can do it night in and night out. And that's why they're in the major leagues for a long time. And so there really are no nights off. And it is a lot of people, I don't, they don't take it for granted, but a lot of people, when a guy doesn't hit well in the major leagues or even more impressively, when a guy does hit well, like super well, consistently, people just take it for granted. It is amazing to me how guys are able to hit. You know, I know batting average isn't a big thing, but guys are able to hit 300 every single year. Like that is incredible to me to think about that because it is so hard to hit against major league pitching. The defenses are so good, and there's so many games. It just it's really really difficult. Um, and I noticed that pretty quickly as a hitter. You know, like my first game, I faced Greg Maddox, okay? Now, he was at the end of his career, I understand that. But still, he's a Hall of Fame pitcher, and he's still a, a pretty decent pitcher at that time. And then the next night out was Clayton Kershaw. And he was a younger pitcher. Um, I think it might have been even his rookie year. But you guys get the idea. It's like every night you're facing somebody. You know, when we played the Giants, we had to face Matt Cain, who at that time was, like, really, really good. And then you got to face Tim Lincecum. And then... You know, then you I forget who else it was, but it's every single night. You rarely face guys that you're like, oh, this guy's not very good. Like, just imagine playing in, I don't know, the American League East, and you go to play against the Yankees, and you got to face Cole. Well, I'm out. And then you face Severino, and then whoever else, Paxton. And then, you know, it just keeps going. And then, okay, after that series, you go down to the Rays, and now you got to face Blake Snell, and you got to face Charlie Morton. And um, it's just like, holy hell, like night after night after night after night, there's no off nights. That is something you don't ever, 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 no matter what level you play that, you never see that. Um, and then the last thing is the the pressure to win is definitely different. Now, when I played, I was with the San Diego Padres. We were in last place. So the pressure to win, and it's a small market. So the pressure to win at that point wasn't super high. But you still, as a player, you still know that you've got to win. And if, if you don't play well and help your team win, then you could lose your job. Uh, in the minor leagues, it, you don't you don't have that. In the minor leagues, it's all about development. And and coaches talk about it all the time. Hey guys, we're here to develop, all right? We don't really care about the wins and losses. You hear this a lot. We want to develop, develop, develop. And so there isn't a whole lot of pressure on you to win, as long as you're working hard to develop. Now you got to play well, or else you could get sent down or cut. So there is some pressure. But it's not like the major leagues. And you definitely feel some of that. Even for me, who we were on a last place team or whatever, like you still feel it. And when we lost some games, like there were some players that were not happy about it in the clubhouse and spoke up about it. And you, know, you don't just you don't feel that as much in the minor leagues. And in the major leagues, when people are doing that, it's like veteran players. Again, guys that you're like, oh, I know this guy. I've watched this guy play for a really long time. They're not messing around. Um, you know, you're, you've got... Again, the media isn't huge in San Diego, but there's just more media and more people asking questions, and you've got interviews, more interviews, and um, they're talking about constantly about winning or hey, you guys are struggling, you're in last place, and blah blah blah. And so you're, it's a different type of atmosphere that you're used to. Um, you know, in college, obviously, it's about winning, but this is a much, you know, it's a much 
smaller scale. Like I went to Wake Forest, and yeah, it was about it was about winning for the players and the coach, um, you know, the coaching staff. And but like there wasn't a huge Wake Forest following. It's not you know when we left the field, that was kind of it. When you play in the big leagues, especially in a big market team, like it's about winning for your organization and for your players, but then also for your for the city and for the state and for you know sometimes that part of the country and then some for some teams like the, a lot of people around the country are fans of you so it's just a, a much different atmosphere you're going to deal with it a lot more when you're off the field you're going to have to answer questions a lot more and so all that is just much much different so those are some of the big things now there's uh, we could probably talk make this video like hours long because there's lots more stuff we could get into but I when I when I sat down and thought about it those are the main things that came to mind as far as just playing in a major league game and how different is this from all the other levels I've ever I've ever played at um, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys let me know if you have any more questions in the comment section below subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up all that stuff thank you to our patrons on patreon that support the channel don't forget to hit the notification bell so you guys get all of our videos when they're coming out and we'll talk to you later